Hello and welcome to The Blank Potato. This horror story is uploaded by Reddit user Reddit Captain. If you want to learn more about the author, link in the description. And the title of this next story is I Had to Kill My Wife. Before we start, I would just like to invite you to please like this video, subscribe if you haven't already, and click that notification bell so you won't miss any of my future uploads. So, get comfy and let's begin. My wife and I have been married for roughly 32 years. We met at 18 and have been inseparable. We have never fought, never argued, and there have never been any bad times. Honestly, it sounds like a dream and I have been living it. The love I have for her is unlike anything I have ever known in my life. We each have our boundaries for every couple. She doesn't go into my workshop. I don't go into her sewing room or she doesn't come in while I'm changing, and I don't go in while she bathes. Well, you get the picture. We have never questioned nor tried to push each other's boundaries. We constantly praise each other. The communication is fantastic, and we are able to take constructive criticisms. It's literally like a dream. But there's this old saying, if it seems too good to be true, that's because it is. And I got hit hard with that today. My entire world crashed down in front of me, and there was nothing I could do about it. Let me set the scene for you. We woke up at 5.30, like any other day, cuddled for 30 minutes, and started our morning get-ready-together routine. Brushed our teeth, went downstairs for breakfast and coffee, went to the cars, kissed each other by, and we went our separate ways. I completed the project I had been working on earlier than expected, leaving me about three extra hours left in my normal work schedule. It couldn't have worked out better for anything in my life. Today was our 32nd anniversary, so I decided to take those hours and plan a celebration. I'll admit it, I'm a hopeless romantic and she adores it. I went to the flower shop and bought a bouquet for 32 roses. Then I made a trip to the bakery where I picked up 32 red velvet cupcakes and then went to the store and bought 32 strawberries, two steaks, a sack of white potatoes, fresh squash, and some of that dipping chocolate. I also made a stop by the jewelry section and picked out a rose gold necklace that had two hearts connected and engraved on them was forever. One more stop to the liquor store and I walked out with some pink champagne. Once I had that, I made my way to the house and began to prepare dinner. I set a plate on each end of the table with two candles in between and a dozen roses next to her plate. I went to the kitchen and sat the cupcakes in the middle of the island and placed a chocolate covered strawberry on top of each one and then sat the necklace box in the middle and sat another dozen roses behind them. I made my way to the bedroom and started setting up a bath for her. Candles, essential oils of lavender and rosemary and sat the last eight roses on the edge of the tub. I had to cut the stems shorter for this. Again, I'm hopeless. As I made my way off the last step, I met her at the door. I hugged her and began to proceed as we normally would. I took her coat and put her shoes away as she told me about how much she missed me. I carefully pulled the handkerchief out of my pocket and slipped it over her eyes. She giggled that sweet small giggle I love so much and asked what I was doing and I simply said it was a surprise. I guided her to the kitchen and pulled the handkerchief away. The feeling I got when I watched her eyes light up and shine was fulfilling and exactly what I wanted to see. She squealed and jumped into my arms telling me how much she loved and appreciated me. Once she let me go, I pulled the box off the cupcakes and handed it to her. She opened it and I saw tears form in her eyes. She told me how beautiful it was as I placed it around her neck, a perfect fit. I then took her hand in mine and walked her into the dining room where dinner was ready. She gasped 
and covered her mouth as if it was her first time witnessing something so beautiful. She looked at me with the happiest expression and I placed my forehead on hers and said, Happy anniversary, my love. Dinner went by pretty quickly as we were both famished. Once we were done, I told her to leave it for me to clean up and I led her to the bathroom. Once she opened the door, another gasp left her as she took in the scene. She once again threw her arms around me and told me how much she loved everything I did for her. I told her I was going to go clean up while she enjoyed her bath and would bring cupcakes up in about an hour. That way, she could have plenty of time to relax. This is when things took a turn. Once I left the room, I forgot to grab a dishcloth out of our closet. So, I turned around and went to go back in. I pecked on the door and got no reply. So, I assumed she had gone into the bathroom. So I cracked the door to check, just to be sure, and I peeked my head into the room. The bathroom door is directly across from the bedroom door. What I saw terrified me. My wife had left the door open. I watched as she grabbed the skin on the back of her head and pulled it away from her skull. I watched in horror as she pulled the skin away from her body and stepped out of it like a suit. Her muscle and bone laid bare in front of me. I could see the blood drip from her body and hear the squish of muscles. I watched as she carefully laid the suit over the toilet and stepped into the tub. A heavy sigh of relief left her mouth as she fully sank into the tub. The water began to take the shade of blood and began to steam wildly. I watched as the muscles began to contract all over her skull and arms as new skin began to grow in its place. I gently closed the door, not wanting to see more, and made my way downstairs. I already knew what was going to happen to the old skin. My mind went on autopilot as I began to clean up my mess from dinner. After cleaning the kitchen, I grabbed the cupcakes, two glasses of milk, my pistol, and with a heavy heart, I headed up the stairs. You see, my project is I hunt the Skelties. The Skelties are humanoid beings that eat children. They can eat our food, but cannot survive off it. We haven't figured out why only children, but we assume it's because they are easy targets. They are able to shed and regrow skin at any point, but must shed at least once a day. The skin is then consumed, which makes them damn near impossible to find if you don't know what you are looking for. They are a very happy-go-lucky race, but are brutal in the way they feed. They first rip the appendages from the body, then they rip the head from the body, and then drained the blood. Their jaw stretched open and they swallowed the rest of it whole. The rest of the body parts are stored for later if they are unsuccessful in their next hunt. They usually stay in the woods or around rivers. They will not resort to violence with adults, which is how they die. Five bullets to the head and one to the heart usually does the trick. Making my way up the stairs, everything started to make sense. She worked at an orphanage where child would go missing every two to three weeks. She never let me see her in the bathroom at night when she bathed. How nice and non-confrontational she is and how she has not seemed to age a single day in the last 32 years. My footsteps got heavier as I came closer to the door of our room. I stopped and knocked on the door. It's now or never. As she opened the door, she met the barrel of my gun, and she was no more. With every bullet that flew, I felt my heart shatter. I saw her body fall to the floor and watched the blood pooled around her. I looked next to her where a pill bottle fell from her hands. Tears ran down my face. As I bent down to grab the bottle, I looked at it and the name of the medication was Libalvi and it was prescribed to me. She was going to try and drug me. Too bad, I found her out first. If you enjoyed that horror story, feel free to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already and click one of the videos here to watch more horror stories like that. And as usual, 
you have a creepy evening and I'll see you again next time.